Gene Hickman is here at the Peabody Public Library on uh, March the 9th, 2010 for the uh, Willow County Oral History Project. And uh, I am John Pontius. Um, thank you very much for coming here today, Gene. Where were you born and raised? I was born in North Thorn Creek Township uh, within a mile of where I presently live. Uh, a little bit of, uh, I didn't know this until John shared this with me a few years ago. John and I are cousins removed by, what, five times or six times? A ways back. Like that, a ways back. Uh, a fellow by the name of Christian Kinsey. Okay. Was a great, 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 great grandfather of ours okay. that was, uh, had a family of 10 kids uh, that was right across the road from where I was born and grew up. And, uh, and that was, we were classmates for and 12, 12 years. 12 years. John and I were classmates uh, along with several others. Okay. Uh, uh, who were some of the others? Oh, probably from what we've been able to identify some of the Zoom rooms, uh, probably some of the Jaggers, some of the. No, I'm talking about classmates. Oh, now. classmates. Yeah. I forgot to mark those down. You'll have to <laughs> okay. fill that in. Okay, well, I uh, remember we, uh, Mickey Zoom Room Mickey. and um, a lot, uh, we had a lot of tri and, classmates. Well, and Darwin. Okay. He was part of that Zoom Room clan too. Okay. Because he went to church up there as a kid. Uh, okay. at the, uh, and Grandpa was the first deacon in the Blue River, what is now known as the Blue, Blue River Brethren Church in 1852. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, who were your parents and uh, where did they come from? Okay, Dad was Joe, Joseph, and Mom was Grace Longenecker. And Mom's, and I found this out as things went along, Mom's dad was born and raised just a half a mile right straight north of where I was born and raised on the north side of the county line right there. Okay. And they then moved to the Cherubusco area. <clears throat> Dad was uh, basic. He was born over in Noble County on the county line, north side of the county line, uh, over by uh, Ari, okay. uh, just west of Ari, about a mile. Mm -hmm. So they got together somewhere back along the line. <laughs> so, what schools did we go to? I went to Thorn Creek <laughs> in Columbia City. Joint high school. Okay, uh, is the school uh, the school still there? Um, when and why did it close? Well, that was school consolidation was basically forced upon us by the state uh, through they found out how to financially break our backs uh, to where we had no choice but to go with consolidation. Their big selling point is, it's going to be cheaper, it's going to be cheaper. Well, it seems as though my taxes have gone up. Same house, my taxes have gone from $700 a year to $3,400 a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, in 20 years' time. So, so when was this change? Uh, what was it? Uh, Roughly. 90, 91, 92. Okay. Somewhere through there. Okay. Is uh, who, what happened to the building is, is who owns it now? Uh, belongs to a lady in Florida, the Thorn, Thorn Creek building you're yes. talking about. Yes. Belongs to a lady in Florida who bought it with the intent of making it into a senior retirement community and community center for activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, they started a remodel uh, about four years ago and went to hook up the sewer plant and uh, the state says no you got to put a new one in and that just brought the whole project to a cost or to a halt. Okay. The cost was totally prohibitive. So the building's just sitting there falling down. Is uh, it more or less intact? Uh, say is the gym still there? Oh yeah, yeah the building's okay. still the there. Classrooms? Classrooms are still all there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well let's talk about our teachers. Uh, what, what ones do you remember the most? Floyd Chapman in particular, okay. and Mrs. Jones. And now why Mrs. Jones? Mrs. Jones, because when I was 
second grade, when we were second yeah. grade, and I know you won't remember this, but I remember very vividly, I was the biggest kid in class, tallest oh, kid in class. I was. However, <laughs> I was scared to death of everybody for various, I don't know how or why, but I was one of those, I would not go out and play at recess because somebody was going to beat me up. And Mrs. Jones would sit and read with me and whatever during recess period. And I oh. remember that in particular about Mrs. Jones. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Good. I remember the crafts we did in, in her class. Floyd Chapman, uh, his uh, father was a teacher. And his daughter, Martha, became a teacher. And actually, she taught teachers at Ball State uh, mm -hmm. at one time. And um, I remember also that Floyd, uh, when, just soon after he retired, he died. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a farmer, too. Right, he was a farmer, too. Yeah. I remember about Floyd in particular, a science class. Uh, teaching evolution. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chapman yeah. would read what the book said, the science book. And then he would get the Bible out and he said, here is an alternative to what's being, what we're required to teach in school. Mm -hmm. And he would read the creation story out of Genesis. Okay. And he presented both sides. He didn't, he didn't try to persuade either side, but he said there's more than one view of creation. Okay. And I remember that specifically out of out of Mr. Chapman. Do you remember anything about how discipline was handled in, uh, when we were going to school? Absolutely. <laughs> the paddle. Okay. Did okay. you feel the paddle? One time. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember if it was Gardner Aigner. I'm thinking maybe it was Gardner. Hmm. Uh, if you remember, our class was a little bit on the rowdy side. Our seventh grade, we had uh, Mrs. Greer was the fourth teacher okay. in the seventh grade. One of the teachers ended up with a nervous breakdown. Another went off to the military, and I forget whatever happened to the other, but Mrs. Greer came in, and she was uh, kind of knew how to straighten things up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's my view. Okay. Maybe, what's your view, John? <laughs> well, uh, I felt the paddle too. Uh, I remember, uh, I, maybe it was uh, the sixth grade, and um, we were waiting for the school buses to come, and I threw a snowball up against the uh, side of the, the brick building uh -huh. there, and someone else uh, hit a little girl uh, in the face with a snowball, and um, so the next day, they, they never did find out, no one admitted who did that, so they brought three of us up to the principal's office. Who was the principal at that time? Shou I got Shouse. A name of Shouse. Shouse? Oh, I yeah. can't remember his first he name. He knew how to apply the paddle, too. Oh, he was a big, intimidating <laughs> guy, and he had a, uh, a kind of a slender uh, wood mm -hmm. paddle, mm -hmm. and uh, when we got up there, well, he said, uh, touch your knees, uh, lean over and touch your knees, and uh, he gave uh, all three of us three really hard whacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember him saying, well, boys, you better line, uh, get in line or something like that. Uh -huh. And um, also I remember uh, Grace Rice, she was our sixth grade teacher in, uh, on the second floor on the north side. And uh, her room was a uh, detention room, uh, and if you misbehave, uh, instead of going out for recess, you had to stay in there. And uh, I don't remember if we had to write anything on the, on the blackboard or not, but uh, she was a pretty stern teacher, wasn't she? Uh, I'll, I'll share something with you with <laughs> Mrs. Rice. I think I've shared it with you before. Okay. I was a flunky in school to start with. Well, you, now you need to tell us why. I, I'll do that okay. a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Rice, uh, coming out of the sixth grade, at that time we got a report card that was showed for a whole year. I had 40 F's on my report card for the year. 
I was passed by Mrs. Rice with the condition that I would do better in the future. And uh, I said, the Lord has a sense of humor in this, in that a few years down the road, she was still teaching, substitute teaching, and I was able to write her a paycheck several times. As trustee. As trustee. <laughs> but my, today, I know that the reason that I had difficulties in school was I'm dyslexic. Things, I can speak things the right way, but when I put them down on paper, sometimes it's backwards, or vice versa. In reading, mm -hmm. it will come out. So it's total confusion. But when I was in school, we had full classes. If you remember our fourth grade, we had 38 kids in, down in Mrs. Parker's room. You have and a better memory than I were, do. The desks were double road okay. like that. And we had 38 kids, so it was pass them out of here, get them out of here. But even had they retained me, uh, it's not likely, because they didn't know or understand such things back then, uh, that I still probably would have slipped on through on Fs. But anyway, that's Okay, it, yeah. now I, I'll have to say this about uh, Mrs. Rice, who is married to Newell Rice, who's a longtime teacher and at the high school. High school. Um, she uh, uh, taught music and she played uh, classical music uh, in about the seventh grade, like uh, Claire de Lune and Leva Strom. And I remember Randall Carpenter and I, and Randall's a doctor here in sure. now, uh, went up to her one day and just really thanked her for showing this music we'd never heard before. <laughs> oh, really? So, uh, oh, my. That, wow. was, uh, that, that was very nice. So, uh, what did you do uh, after, right after high school? Right after high school, uh, went off to basic training with the Air National Guard. Uh, let me see, that would have been 50, let me think a minute, yeah, the beginning of 59, went off to basic training, got my basic training in, come home and uh, got married then, in, or no, that would have been 58, got married in 59 to Karen. And, and what was her full name? Van Diemen. And who were her parents and where did she grow up? Uh, her parents was uh, Charles and Ada Van Diemen. Mm -hmm. uh, going back a little on just briefly in their history, uh, they were from the community here. Okay. Uh, her, uh, uh, <laughs> lost the name. Her grandfather uh, was uh, the, uh, down at Peabody had the general store, postmaster, township trustee, assessor, oh. filling station, had all of that okay. down there. Uh, so that was just a, and they were just from, and her mom was from Cherubusco, mm -hmm. and uh, they had got together back along the lines too, so. <laughs> okay. But they were local, basically local people, and they moved from Columbia City to Tri Lakes in, uh, well, Karen was seventh grade, so. Uh, okay. Uh, so you were telling uh, what you were doing, you were, you... Oh, okay. Uh, Back to the Air Guard, we got married in 59, still married, mm -hmm. so we're, we're past 50 years in, okay. in wedding bliss, <laughs> and uh, two children, two boys, uh, and they both live close by, one lives at Goose Lake and the other lives just a block down the road from me right there at Tri Lakes. Uh, you, have, were, uh, you, you were in the, you had a trash hauling business uh, then sometime, didn't you? Okay, uh, we'll cover that just briefly here among my notes. Okay. Uh, what was the name of the... Well, it originally started as Trilake Scavenger Service, and then I, uh, I didn't really care for the name Scavenger. Uh, well, it originally Dad bought the business, and about... 57, and I went, went to work for him in 59, and then I bought the business in 71. He was dying of cancer, and I bought the business from him then in 71. And it was called Heckman Santa Service. We served the community, not only this community, but uh, uh, originally it started out as a one-truck operation here in at Tri-Lakes, and uh, it 
it expanded to where we had uh, contracts with South Whitley, Pearson, Larwell, Columbia City, Cherubusco, Garrett. Basically, we ran uh, up and down uh, 205. Where uh, did you take the trash? Well, that went to, uh, at first it was to Bird's Dump, which was a uh, county county operation. Uh, where was that? On Bird? On Bird Road. Oh. Just around the corner from, from yes. your home yes. homestead there. Uh, and then they moved it over to uh, Ben Lott's place over on uh, Thorn Creek. 150 W. Yeah. Thorn Creek Township. Right, Thorn Creek Township. And it was located there for a number of years. So was trash hauling uh, in some way mandated? Uh, I mean, by the county or? No, no. It was, uh, there was in the 20 plus years we were in business, uh, we had 20 plus competitors that would come and go in the business. They'd jump in and they'd go by the wayside okay. and others. And so it was a very competitive, very competitive business. Yes. Did, uh, is uh, the place in Thorn Creek uh, uh, where everyone in the county put their trash, or was there were there other places in the that county? was uh, when Birds was located there. Uh, there was one there and one down at South Whitley. Okay, uh, out on the east east side of South Whitley, there were two okay. at that time what they called two landfills. They closed those two and ended up with just the one up at uh, up at uh, Lots Place. There. So, in, in other words, now the whole county went to dumps like trash on Thorn Creek Township. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Well, then, that's long past, needless to say. <laughs> okay. Um, where did people? Um, were you one of the first? Uh, your father one of the first, or are you one of the first ones to uh, haul trash? In and, the uh, in the. Uh, well, Dad bought the business from a fellow by the name of Hunt, who had started it in uh, 1946. Okay. Uh, when he, he had been in the military, and when he got out of the military, uh, at the end of World War II, he just started picking up garbage around the lakes there. And, uh, uh, Dad, my first acquaintance with, when I was just a little guy, uh, was Dad went down to, during the summer, to the uh, uh, Y camp there at the lake and picked up garbage on a daily basis and took it home and fed it to the hogs. Took from garbage oh, okay. from, the, from the camp there and took it home. So that no. was my first experience with garbage. <laughs> now, formerly, uh, people just, uh, like in Columbia City, what did they do in the old days? Well, the, the city had, uh, I'm not sure just when the city got into, into the trash business, they had a sizable dump just just right over here, about a, okay. two blocks right over here. Not too a, far from the river. They had a city dump, and there were just numerous guys around town. Uh, I don't know just when they started picking up trash on a, okay. you know, around town, and then for a time, of, a period of time, they had an incinerator uh, that they burnt everything, okay. and uh, that was, boy. Under the Keith Dowell administration, I think they put that incinerator in, yeah, something the, like the that. The mayor, Keith right. Dowell. Uh, did you, how long did you have this, or did you sell it eventually? This I eventually sold it. I sold it, uh, well, it should be 20 years ago. Uh, and is I there, uh, what company then? Well, I sold to Serval, and Serval okay. since uh, merged with or sold to Republic Industries, which is a national conglomerate. Okay. Now, when did you first run for trustee? Well, it would have been 1970. Got elected and took office in 71. Now, what kind of a campaign did you have then? <laughs> Very little. I didn't have any money. Uh, I was on the fire department. The fire department people, firemen, uh, encouraged me to run for office uh, because stepping back just, just a bit, I was on the volunteer fire department. Okay, let's go into that now. When did, uh, and, and how and why did Thon Creek first have a fire department? Well, originally there was a, what the, it was called a four township volunteer fire department that included Thorn Creek. Okay. And they had one truck for the four townships. And out at Tri Lakes, uh, they had a little two-wheel trailer with a little pump 
and uh, maybe a couple hundred or maybe a hundred feet of hose, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Whenever there was a fire, whoever had a trailer hitch that could hook onto that trailer and take it to the fire, that's the way we fought fires back then. Okay. That would have been in the early 50s, somewhere along through there. And then Thunder Creek finally organized their own. Right, they, they finally split the four townships, each took responsibility of their own, and Thorn Creek bought that four township truck. Now going down the road, that poor old flathead V8 would get about 35 miles an hour going up nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But that was the, the, became the baby of Orrin Hass. I don't know if you remember Orrin Hass. I remember truck. the name. Yeah, but that was, he was, that was his truck. And that was the beginning of, of uh, so you were a part. volunteer farmer. Yes, and those people encouraged me to run because a little, I forget just, well, it had been probably the late, or 69 or 70, where the, Barry's Boathouse restaurant is up there now. Uh -huh. <clears throat> there was a uh, combination grocery, tavern, restaurant store there okay. that caught fire. And at that time, the truck that we had, we got to the fire and started pumping water, but every hose blew. The equipment we had was so old, those hoses were so old, the truck continued to pump water, but with all the hoses blown, the building just burnt to the ground. Okay. So I said, if I got elected as trustee, I would see if we couldn't get that changed. So over a period of years, I think we can say we have one of the best departments in the county today. Okay. Uh Back when we were kids, what, who fought the fires? It was all volunteer, and it's still all volunteer. You mean uh, some fire department in Columbia City didn't come out and help fight fires? Or? No. Okay. Now, the, the firemen today across the county have agreements, what, what's called mutual aid. If they need help. If they need yeah. help. And if it's a major structure fire, they'll all almost always they'll call for someone else, one of the other departments to come in and assist. Uh, because between manpower, the, the firemen today have to be trained, have the same training as the full-time paid people have to have. And they're not getting paid. And they're not getting paid. However, their training is still be, is to be, is required to be the same. And that has to do with the liability insurance and everything that's okay. out there today has, has forced these these things. Who has been some of the other longtime volunteer firemen at Thorn Creek? Bryce Reimer okay. was a classmate. Mm -hmm. uh, Bryce, I forget how many years he's been there. He's been 30, I don't know, 30 some years that Bryce has been on the department there. Uh, boy. Have there been uh, major fires uh, or catastrophes in Thorn Creek in your lifetime? Oh yes, like uh, Muncie Colony. Back when we had just a little uh, trailer <laughs> truck combination things. Uh, two, two, three. There were three major cottages, and when I say major, those were. There's still a couple of big ones standing in Muncie Colony, but they were big cottages that were. Uh, retreats for people from Muncie. It's the reason they call it Muncie Colony. Okay. And these were probably, oh, I'm going to say four to five thousand square feet each one of them. They were huge, two stories, three story, and the one was four stories tall. Just huge, big barns. None of them were sealed or insulated or anything. But they, uh, and they had their own water, water tower system there. Uh, big water tower stood there for many years there to provide water for you know, for the cottages. I suppose there have been uh, another barns burned down and that sort of thing. How many far? How many barns are left in Thorn Creek Township, John? Right. <laughs> yes. uh, there's just not many left. That 
uh, that's been one of the major changes. And uh, what, other, Creek what, what other uh, major changes, like driving through Thorn Creek, do you or that well, stand out? Thorn Creek is no longer an agricultural yeah. township. When we first got involved in things, I could go up Road Nine and every farm property there would be livestock. Mm -hmm. Today you go up Road Nine, there's two from town to out to my place, two places that will have livestock along there in six miles. Uh, the other we have two full-time farmers left in Thorn Creek Township. The other um, thing I notice is uh, the number of houses. Certainly, so many more houses. Certainly, yeah. And some of them, if you go look at Eddie Lee's place, oh, the big mansion. Uh huh. Okay, now he was able to be to build one of the biggest and grandest houses in the recent in the years. County. And, and uh, he and the fellow out here on the east side of yes, town, uh, the Balm, or I don't know, uh, you're can't close. his name. So, uh, and he was a Thorn Creeker before he built that up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Has this been a good place to grow up and live? Uh, Ab absolutely. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. We go fishing at the lakes. Uh, just had a had a ball sliding downhill in the wintertime. Remember more than once. My sister and I'd be down sliding downhill, and the next thing you know, it was past supper time, and it was dark, and we'd go trudging back through the field, back to the farm to to uh, so, so supper. Tri Lakes or Cedar, you know, you you had the first fields uh, just north of Cedar Lake, right? Right. right. And well, the first one was the what I call the Lucky Estate. That was something I was going to mention in my thoughts too that I forgot about. No, Lucky was a Dr. Lucky. It was Dr. Dr. Lucky had a seaplane hangar on Big Cedar for a good number of years. Was this on the north side? The north side of of, okay. uh, of uh, Big Cedar there. So you knew you could see the planes coming down and oh yeah, see them come down and land, but on the lake. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yep, yep, sure did. <laughs> that was quite a quite a thing in us. So, uh, Cedar Lake or, uh, or Tri Lakes was uh, a part of your life. Absolutely. During our teen years, uh, the Elvis Presley era was hot. Yes. Uh, during the summer, you could go up and down almost every every street around Tri Lakes, and there'd be a gathering of teenagers in somebody's garage or somebody's basement, and they'd be dancing and just singing and oh. just having a good old time. Okay. Just a lot of that went on. Like in your high school years or a little uh -huh. after right. that. Mm -hmm. um, I peddled papers around Tri Lakes when I was a freshman. Newspapers? Newspapers. Okay. And But we saw Tri Lakes go from Oh, when we were kids, uh, Void Hively was our bus driver, would pick right. up Carol Who was Ott. married to our fifth, gr fifth, fifth grade, grade teacher, teacher, I think, yeah. He'd, uh, Carol Ott was his first uh, kid that he picked up, and uh, just north of me, and he'd come down and run through the lakes, clear over to, and he had an old 36 passenger bus. If you remember that old bus where they, uh, he put a new chassis under an old body. The township couldn't afford to buy a new body, so they can they mounted it. Oh, I'm thinking about a 46 or 47 Chevy chassis. What did he pay for in a new bus? I wouldn't have a okay. clue, John. All right, would not have a clue. So you were going. You were telling about Boyd Hidley. Anyway, this 36 passenger picked up all the kids at Tri Lakes and ended up over at Jerry Smith's. We talked earlier about the airport. We'd go by the airport hangar down to the little log cabin that Jerry grew up in. You see the, the, the person the tire man, the tire tire man, man here yeah. in town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Go down to him and pick him up. And that was all the kids that was at Tri Lakes then. Okay. Now there's several big buses come out of there. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Tri Lakes. Uh, um, the first 
the Tri Lakes Baptist Church. Uh, yes. How, how long has it been there? Been there since 1950. Okay. Uh, I was Where? located between the lakes there. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, okay. located there on the, what do they call that? Center Street. Yeah, okay. Center Street mm -hmm. between the lakes. And it's been in the same building. Mm -hmm. Has it changed, uh, gotten bigger, or anything? It comes and goes. I think okay. like most churches, comes and goes. Okay. Uh, went from, started in a tent in 1950. Oh. With revival services up on Crampton Road. Started there. Uh, a year later I was converted there at the church and I've been there since in 51. Okay. And, uh, You've probably been uh, very active and uh, I've served an officer and every capacity, just about other being the preacher. Uh, right now, okay. I'm chairman of the board. And I've been that numerous times. Was okay. chairman of the, of the building committee the last time we had an addition on, and that was 32 years ago. So, what uh, happened to the fish hatchery? Fish hatchery was, uh, you know, that's under the control of the DNR. Uh, back, and this includes some of our relatives too, Forceborn was the manager there at the hatchery during the 40s and early 50s, and Jess Braddock worked for him. You remember the Braddocks? Yes, we have a classmate, I think, uh, Judy Braddock. Judy. Yes. And tell me how that worked. Uh, they had uh, little ponds. Mm -hmm. Now, would they uh, put fish eggs in there and let them hatch? Of different, of different species of fish. There okay. were seven different ponds there. Shriner Lake's about four foot higher than what Round Lake and the Cedars are. And they, they run pipes from Shriner Lake to fill the ponds. And then, the, I, don't know, I don't know what all made it or how or why, but in a hatching season they would lower the waters to where they would literally uh, to get the fish down into a small spot would lower the water in the ponds by draining it off into Round Lake. So they were up here and they would fill to this point and then when they needed to, after the fish had hatched and they were ready to move them onto other lakes, they would shrink that, okay. that pond down to a little spot and catch them and move on to other places. Okay, and what happened to the fish hatchery? Why did it close? I don't know why the DNR closed. Okay. Uh, they, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Uh, there was one over at Wawasee also. Okay. Uh, don't, you'd have to get... And it's a very nice building still there, right? Still there. Uh, and tentatively, the county's going to inherit that from the state. Okay. Uh, and the community wants to keep it as a community building, uh, tentatively. I think that's what's going to happen with it the way it looks right now. What other businesses were around Tri Lakes? Uh, it seems like there was a, uh, a bait shop or something on the way on the West End or uh, Mike Cones or something. Cones Bait. Oh, Cone. Yeah. Cone. K O H N E? Mm hmm. Okay. They had, at one point, when we were teenagers, they had the largest uh, live bait company in the country. Not just Indiana, in the country. They shipped bait all over. Uh, those teenagers, and I've, I was and one, one of them. And one of our classmates, uh, one, of, one of the daughters, right? Helen. 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 And a son, David, became a, uh, a prominent scientist. Really? In I didn't know that. California, who uh, invented something and sold the rights and became a millionaire. Really? Yes. Didn't know that. Because his brother Dick, younger brother, still lives there on the family place right there. Oh, he does. Dick's, matter of fact, I talked, he was one of them that took some of my time this morning. <laughs> okay. But there's, the business is no longer there. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, okay. no. Long gone. Uh, the commercial, uh, as, well, the commercial growers of, of live bait came onto the scene. Okay. And that put, that put Cone out of business. 
What other businesses were there that aren't there now? Um, well, with the exception, uh, there was a laundromat. Mm -hmm. One time there were four groceries, including one. Four. Yeah, including one down on the island, which is called the Little Old Grocery. The building is still there, but what? The you say island? Is there an island somewhere? Yeah, down on the north side of of uh, okay. Little Cedar. Okay. Going back to Road. Okay. Uh, and that building is still there. At one time, there were five different gas stations, three garages, <laughs> and one in particular that I remember uh, was Chrome's General Store. That was over right on Road 9 and Bear Road. Okay. You remember a little bit about Chrome's General Store had everything from fresh produce and meat to nuts and bolts, dynamite, dynamite. fertilizer. Oh yeah. When we were kids, you could go in and buy a single stick of dynamite and use it yourself. Uh, for what? The farmers primarily used it for uh, getting uh, tree stumps out of the okay. ground or big rocks that were in the middle of the field that needed to be... Uh, Can't do that now, can we? No, no. But that was, that was readily available, and Chrome's had it there. One of the things I was thinking about was the, the fact that, that Chrome had a, you know, the off-falls that would come off of the, of the fresh, fresh produce. He, he was noted for his fresh, fresh produce, but the off-falls went out to the pig pen, and he had his pigs set up uh, to where in rotation, they would just every couple of weeks they would butcher a pig, and uh, you know they would. So they always had fresh pork okay. in the meat counter, which was to me was very innovative at the time. Of course, you couldn't do that today, but that was one of the things that was done back there. But the, that and he had a a fella there. Uh, that came in, I don't know how he ended up there, but anyway, the fellow's name was Scotty, who told of when he was growing up, his mom, baked, during the summer months, would bake goods for Frank and Jesse James from out in the Dakotas or somewhere out oh. there. They had a hideout where they would come and stay during the summer while they were running from the Hey. Police. <laughs> anyway, I remember that old gentleman, you know, telling some of the stories of the West uh, when we were kids there. But so, that would, uh, that was just the groceries. I forgot the TV shops. Remember when the TVs come in, they had to be repaired all the time. There was two full-time repair shops just at Tri Lakes, besides three additional. Well, where would they have been at Tri Lakes? Uh, uh, houses. No. Uh, one had a shop right behind uh, what's now called Portside Pizza. Mm -hmm. There was a building oh, down there, a block side. building okay. there, and then Will Hoyt had his shop back down, down on Fox Drive, and that building is still still there. And they were full-time just repairing TVs, and uh, yeah. because, you know, the, the, the old tubes would blow, very seldom would you get a get more than a month's use out of your TV before one of the tubes would blow and you'd have to have the repairman come and fix your TV. That was 50, from 53 through probably 60, somewhere along through there. Uh, let me see, what else we got there? How about restaurants? Restaurants? No, back then they are different than they are now. Well, the the Cove, Pirates Cove, Beechwood, whatever you know it as, yes. was started as a 40 and 8 club way back then. And we had uh, we had a classmate whose dad was running it. His name was Ned George mm -hmm. in the second grade. I think and I, I think I shared this with you before. Ned was, uh, uh, of course, he was just our age, but his dad had had the Beechwood whorehouse gambling joint. Really? 
they had the girls upstairs and the pinball machines, and et cetera, in, where, in where the basement. Where exactly was this? The present building. Of? Uh, the Beechwood, the uh, Pirate's Cove, whatever okay. you know it as. Okay, yes. Whatever you know it as today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, and they had a raid there, and George was no longer in school with us. Okay. They, and I don't, I don't have the slightest idea of whatever it become of, but that was very notorious in its, in its day. Very and, interesting. Uh, the then gone on down the lake where the hotel dance hall. You remember the dance hall at all? Which was, was kind of um, just to the east of the present Barry's Boathouse building. Yes. And then to the north of that was uh, the hotel. To the north of that was a whole strip of cottages, were red light cottages along with a hotel annex. And that was some history that went back into the 30s before our time that was made Tri Lakes a real roaring place along with Jimmy Dorsey's band played there. Uh, some of the other big bands of the era played which, right there at Tri Lakes. Which probably ended uh, maybe just after World War II. After or World War II, uh, people had more powerful cars and uh, uh, started driving to Wawasee, up to Lake James, okay. more distance. Uh, so the the dance halls of Tri Lakes and Blue Lake, uh, the Barbies, they became a thing of the past. The gangsters that hung out, uh, Dad delivered ice to the uh, during the summer, uh, just up on the hill there from the church. Uh, there was a gangster hideout there. He said you'd go in the houses, and uh, it wasn't uncommon for. Uh, the table to be just uh, had the Tommy guns and all of those things. He said the license plates on the cars were changed every day, might be the same car, but uh, had a real time of the gangsters ha hang out there at Tri Lakes as well. Well, I didn't know all of this. <laughs> uh, one in particular I wanted to hit too, to the south end of the township, Orrin Hash. I'd mentioned that, down okay. Airport Road. Yes. Which, uh, who uh, lived perhaps right across from another one of our classmates, Dan Martin? Yeah, yes. right up on the hill from Dan. Yes. Uh, Orrin had a, uh, a welding shop, a wrecker service, uh, was kind of a handyman in the community. And one of the things that I've, it just dawned on me in the last few years, and I'd seen this at my house where I grew up, was electricity before windmill electricity. Uh, where I grew up and also there at Orange's uh, place, uh, they had a windmill with a six volt generator on it and a bank of batteries. How about when was this? Well, this was, uh, what, the late 40s or 40s, you know, during the 40s. But uh, now, Orange had been converted because the uh, Columbia City Light came out, I think, just in the 40s, up past his place, and he hooked onto that. But prior to that, you had this bank of batteries that this generator charged the batteries. Then you had six volt lights available in your house. So his house and the house that I grew up in. Bef before we had electricity. Before we had electricity okay. as we have it today. So the wind generators, it's not new, it's improved, but it's not new. They had it way back there. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I want to ask you about a town in Hunter Creek Township. Uh, for many years, you would see a map and there would be a little dot and there would Cresco? be... Cresco? Cresco. Cresco. Do you remember anything about Cresco? Just stopped there a couple of times for a candy bar or something like that and you had to be careful because you don't know how old it was and it may have a bug or two in it. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what? That's about all I remember of Cresco. <laughs> it was just it was just a store. Store. Just, it, well they had gas there at one time. And there were no people living there. Really. Oh yeah, yeah. Lady yeah. lived there. Oh, a lady until, lived right there in the store. store. Yeah. Remember her it, name? No, I don't. Okay. So you probably, Den and the Conrads could probably fill you in there. Denny Conrad okay. could probably help you there, Tom. And when do you suppose that faded out? 
when she died, and I'm trying to remember when. That would have been probably the, let me see, probably the mid 50s, uh, maybe even up to 60. I don't remember just exactly. Somewhere right in there. And there's actually no building there now at all. No, there's no, not not right on the corner. No, that's okay. long gone. Okay. Um, is there anything else about Tri Lakes there you got on your list? <laughs> uh, this oh. is. Uh, New history for me. It is. Well, uh, I vaguely well they uh, in the in the fifties they had boat races on Schrader Lake. Uh, they ran what they call the skipjacks, the little about the size of this couch that had a big motor on the back, uh, where you would have literally hundreds of people come to the lakes to see the see those. Uh, the Lone Eagle was a double decker, forty foot boat that ran up and down the lakes. This was primarily prior to World War II, uh, and they beached. It got rotten enough that they beached it and and burned it up uh, along about forty six or forty seven, something like that. So it was to take tourists, their, tourists, uh, right, tours around the lake. Around the lake. It's my understanding that for a dime you could ride up and down the lake and complete with a dance band that would, oh, would be on board there. Okay. So if you wanted to dance up and down the lake, right, that was there. Uh, the midget racetrack, there was a midget racetrack there. Uh, and one thing I remember especially about this was they started with just a little Cushman engine, scooter engine. And they found that somewhere or another they could reverse reverse the cycle of that engine and get almost twice the RPMs out of it for speed. They were getting 9,000 RPMs out of those little single cylinder mm. <laughs> engines by running them in reverse. The Camp Sing Along. And camp Sing Along. Camp Sing Along was a Y camp for girls from Muncie. And that was located down by where the dam's at now. You go back, back in there. Okay. It was a sizable camp, uh, and they brought girls up here uh, all summer long uh, for facilities there, for the camp they had there. Uh, goodness, that's just a. I, I understand there's a, a Tri Lakes Association. Yeah, property or association. Um, mm -hmm. When did that get started? Was there, there it hasn't been... Uh, no, probably, I'm going to say 25 years ago. I lose track of time. Okay. Probably 25 years ago. Uh, their primary purpose is just uh, education to uh, the safety, uh, water safety, and they've also taken on projects for lake cleanliness. It, it kind of okay. was... Uh, a number of us got the sewer district project started, and that was kind of an off-fall from that sewer district. The sewer district required some kind of an association, and then the, after the sewer district became incorporated, why then the property owners became a separate entity to itself. And they, uh, uh, water cleanliness is one of the major things. They have worked on projects to clean up the water flowing from the fields into the lakes to where they have filters. Uh, they've got filters on, you know, they've got all, all the lakes now, uh, you know, farm farm runoff to where it runs through a kind of a filtration okay. type thing that's been uh, primarily funded by uh, uh, different, different grants that's made that happen. Uh, right now they're getting ready to dredge. There's a little channel around the around the island on a little cedar and uh, it has filled in so much over the years that uh, last summer they were literally mowing across it so okay. they're, they're getting ready to clean that up. Okay I want to ask you a little more about your trustees job. Um, mm -hmm. What when you first started what all did you do as, as trustee? As trustee um, we were responsible for not only uh, dogs Dogs, dog tax, dog, dog claims, where dogs would get into livestock and kill livestock. Why then they're having yet yeah, went through a process of of assessment of what the damages were, and then the dog tax that you had collected paid. 
uh, my first first year in, uh, I had to pay four hundred and some dollars to a farmer for a claim that hadn't hadn't been enough money the year previous to take care of. So we had the dog tax and all that went with that. Uh, that was uh, is no longer. Yeah. Uh, then we've got three active cemeteries that we bury in and are responsible for maintenance of. And what are those? Uh, Style Cemetery, Blue River Cemetery, and Eagle Cemetery. Okay. Uh, and also we inherited Hively Cemetery. Uh, don't know if you're familiar with that one or not. Oh yes. Uh, we inherited that one a few years ago uh, as a township. Uh, we're responsible for those and uh, you know you keep track of who's Basically, the lots that sold, and you try to keep track of who gets buried. That doesn't always happen, but it's you're supposed Does to. your wife help out on some? Oh, of absolutely. It's the only way. Only way I ever run. I'm not a bookkeeper, John. Okay. <laughs> Especially when I have this dyslexic problem, I've got okay. no business putting anything down. Okay. But uh, now, yeah, did you here. give money to the poor people, or how did oh, that yeah, go? Oh yeah, yeah. We. When we first got involved, the, uh, the trustee was responsible for all poor assistance. And that was just before the Johnson era and the welfare food stamp program and those things began to come into the picture. Now, but poor we're, people would get in touch with you and ask for money. Ask for help. help. Not, not money. You never give anybody money. Oh. You may you maybe pay their light bill. You maybe buy them groceries. Uh, you maybe help them with some of, some of their medical expenses, those things. But you pay the the. So there was a fund. Oh, absolutely. That you could tap to uh, to help to take care of those people. And we still have a little bit of that. But most of the programs in place today have pretty well taken that over. We still have a small budget for it, but it's. It's a minimum budget. We have, Thorn Creek has only an average of about one applicant a month. Whereas you get here in town, they'll have that many in a week. You, Columbia Township okay. will have that many in a week. But we'll, so in the past, how long have you been trustee? Since 71. And so uh, there, Thorn Creek hasn't had a lot of poverty. No. Okay. No. Never's okay. had a lot of poverty. People always, well, you got those Lakers up there, but those Lakers have always been pretty independent. They really have. Oh, okay. Very, very seldom, uh, actually, very seldom uh, do, did we ever have people from the lake itself. Once in a while, I remember one time at one o'clock in the morning, there was a pound on the door with a baby, with a mom with a baby that was crying because the baby was hungry. What do you do with somebody at that time? So, Did you feed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got them food. Okay. We got them food. And uh, when we were first involved in it, we had a whole food program for the whole county that operated out of the down here at the jail. Oh, okay. That uh, we distributed food uh, to those in need. Who were uh, some of the other trustees before you? Before me? Yeah. Directly before me was Don Conrad. Okay. The Conrads are a big family, uh, and, uh, and still a big family in right. the community. They're still a big family in the community. Uh, and going back a little bit further, Frank Biddy was trustee when we were in school at Thorn Creek. Okay. One of the things I remember, Frank also was the assessor, which we we thank goodness didn't get this involved in assessing. But I remember Frank coming to our house as assessor on a yearly basis. And he would count the number of chairs at our table, <laughs> the kitchen table. Those things were all assessed. Yes, that's... Is that what you do? Oh, no. <laughs> well, and we don't do any of it anymore. It's all been taken away from us. And now, when was that? Just in the last two years. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's... Some ways we're glad to see it go. Other ways we miss it. Uh, but it's... Uh, Wasn't there a Cornelius? Tom Cornelius? Uh, yes. Okay, now, did... He was before Conrad. Being a trustee, did, were you automatically a part of the school board and... and well, uh, we ran school? the school. Ran the... The high school and... We ran the elementary and junior high. Thorn Creek 
we were totally responsible for. But, and then uh, we set then we set on the okay. board of the joint high school with that other was, trustees. With yeah. six, there were six of us in School City. There were in Columbia City. It's, folks still don't know this, but Columbia City is the only school in the state of Indiana to have a nine-member school board. That's because a representative from each township and three board members from the city make up a nine-member board. There was special legislation made just for the corporation that we have here okay. for a school. Most schools have a five-member board, but Whitney County Consolidated has nine members. Okay. Um, I, when you drive down Airport Road past a school, you see something there that says Heckman Field or something. What is oh. that all about? <laughs> <laughs> That's gone too, John. <laughs> what? That was the athletic field, and the community put our name on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we had the first rubberized track in the uh, in the okay. school system, even better than what the high school had at one time. Okay. And that came that came through a program years ago that was called federal revenue sharing monies, and uh, the community felt that we needed to to have a nice track down there and we put in a nice track for them. But it was federal monies that paid for that that was put in down there. Well, uh, is there anything else you would like to add to all this? Uh, oh, goodness, did we cover everything? <laughs> Let me see. Probably one of the things, school-wise, being responsible for the schools, and I, I still like to pat, pat ourselves on the back. This was one of the things that, education-wise, Thorn Creek was, at one time, the leader in uh, not only computer education, uh, because there was a time way back at the beginning of the computer era to where we had more PCs per capita in the building than any school in the state had. Okay. That's I, surprising. Ivy Tech even came out and uh, uh, observed and looked at what we were doing to prepare college for our students coming in. Uh, you know, we've the what they call new tech that they're talking about now at the high school was what we had in place at Thorn Creek before consolidation. We had programs in place for the kids who couldn't learn or didn't learn normal traditional ways. For the kid at the bottom that couldn't learn, or a kid like myself, that couldn't learn traditional ways of learning, had program in place there. And then at the top end, for the kids who became bored with traditional education. Okay. And that's basically what this new tech program is that they're talking about, uh, will be that kind of a program. And we had that kind of a program in place at Thorn Creek. So those those things we were just blessed with. Well, Gene, thank you uh, <laughs> so much for sharing your uh, knowledge of uh, Thorn Creek Township history for the benefit of uh, all the future generations. And thank you for all you've done for Thorn Creek. It's been fun. We've enjoyed it. And as long as we have our health, why, we're still going to run it for politics and run it for trustee again. Good. <laughs>